Hallelujah. Let all the people praise Him. Let all the people praise Him. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. On Friday, he was a very busy day for a minister. I eulogized decorated army veteran. I left the Canaan church and went to one of the prisons in the city where for years I've been teaching a class on manhood and fatherhood. After leaving the class, I was somewhat exhausted because of the heat and the intensity of the funeral and the outpouring of the preaching experience. I went home to take a brief nap and to prepare for a sermon I had to give at the Glasgow Reform Presbyterian Church on Friday night for the graduates of the Red Line Christian Academy which was acquired by the Glasgow management team. I went there to share a word and to see my dear friend, the senior minister of the Glasgow Church, Dr. Chuck Bettis. As I arrived with our security detail, we found out that the service was scheduled to start at 7.30, but we were told it would start at 7.00. And so for 45 minutes or so, there was some dead time. Dr. Bettis showed me all around the beautiful campus, introduced me to his staff and team, and I was elated yeah, yeah. by what I saw and heard, particularly the graduating class of 2013, a diverse class of young Christian disciples who had graduated from the Red Line Christian Academy. And as we entered into the great sanctuary, we came in on all hell, the power of a great Christian hymn that reigns throughout all denominations. As I sat there and heard the great speeches from these talented young people, scholarships and video presentations, and as this young lady introduced me in this throng of participants and an audience of some a thousand people, predominantly those of the European persuasion, as I was mounting the pulpit to preach a word and a speech, I began to talk about my day previous to coming to the Glasgow Church. And as I encouraged the graduating class, I encouraged them to use their head and their heart. To use their head for intellectual capacity building. To use their heart as a moral compass. And as I began to speak, as the momentum built, I felt the spirit upon me. I knew I was there to give a baccalaureate graduation speech. I know they had invited me in two capacities as the first African American president of Newcastle County and the senior minister of the Canaan Church. The first part of the speech was the council. But midway through that speech, I felt the preacher come in the room. Security detail was there. The room was quiet, as it is in most Presbyterian church. They are the chosen crows. I 
I began to feel the spirit bubbling up in me. The more I began, as the spirit led me to intertwine speech and the sun, I was moved to quote Romans 12. Present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed in this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And when I said that the congregation had been quiet throughout my presentation, but way in the back of the church, in the chosen frozen. One brother stood up and said, Amen, brother. Somebody wanted to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I thought about Whoever has breath. That brother just took the hope. Amen, brother. Not brother, but brother. But it was still praying unto God. I thought about someone asked me the other day. Doctor, who's your hero? Is it Malcolm Mandela, Martin America, Jesse Al, all of those great civil rights leaders? Is it Ralph Bunch, Adam Clay Powell Sr. Jr., Frederick Douglass, Booker T. Washington, they name a plethora of great and mighty leaders. And I said, no, I admire them, I've studied them. But my heroes are my father yeah. and my grandfather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my grandfather, Alfred Bullock. Yeah. Two generations removed from slavery. Oh, down on the homestead in Arkansas. Oh, Raised 11 children. Yeah. I don't know if he ever went to school. One day he was cleaning his 12 gauge shotgun and accidentally blew his left arm off. But Papa, we called him, still farm 80 acres with one arm, 11 kids, some bull, well wild. And on Sunday, he was Deacon Bullock. He sing his way all the way from the house across the field to the deacon's bed. And legend is, they call him Bull. And that's my nickname too, and I'm proud of it. Legend is when Papa Bull would leave the house and sing his way to church. You can hear him praising God and raising him all through the world. He's my hero because in spite of his limitations, he still had a praise. Let everybody
couldn't ask for an emphasy. He could only walk so far until he had to sit down and catch his breath. But he was on the first crew that built the Boeing 747. And he raised seven hard-head kids. Not only that, he had a small business, a janitorial business, where we cleaned up office buildings. And he had a quartet, and he played the guitar. Hallelujah. In spite of his asthma and emphysema, every Sunday, he would get on his guitar. Do I have a witness here? before he left this earth. It stayed in my basement for 19 years. But one day, I said, I gotta give this guitar to somebody who will praise the Lord. That's my daddy's guitar. And every time I hear him playing my daddy's guitar, I say, let everything Y'all don't want to hear no preacher that have praise the Lord. Do I have a witness here? Shout it! Yes. Oh yeah! Last night, about ten thirty, in the Bullock household, phone rang. From George. It was my dear friend, Dr. Ed Rose, the senior minister of the Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church in Cartersville, George. Been there 18 years. He said, Chris, how you doing, man? I said, I'm blessed, Ed. I said, tell me what's going on, on down there in Georgia. Yeah, 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 yeah. He said, Doc, we just celebrated 150 years Ooh. as a church. Yeah. Ed is a former FBI director. He and I met in Alaska when he was the chief of police up there, and I was a student at and Ed said, 150 years, man. I said, what did y'all do special? He said, Doc, we went into the archives of the city. And we found out that the founding pastor, when he started his church, started a church on the scripture, ye shall know the truth. And the truth was set you free. But in our research, we learned that the Klan was embedded in Cartersville, Georgia. Think about 150 years ago. And the preacher began to preach against slavery. Brutality and terrorist groups like the Ku Klux Klan down in Georgia 150 years ago. The Klan got so mad with him, they said, Preacher, you gotta stop preaching. The preacher told the Klan, I'm gonna keep on preaching. The clan said, we're going to build a gallery. We're going to hang you if you keep preaching. Mm -hmm. The preacher kept on preaching. All right, now. Thanks, preacher. They came and got the preacher. Uh -huh. Marched him downtown, Cartersville, Georgia. Put him on the gallery. Around his neck. Dr. Rhodes kept on telling me the 
the story. And I said, what happened here? He said, the head transferred. Said to the preacher, do you have any last words? Preacher said, let me preach one more sermon. The preacher began to preach. And the more he preached, the more tears began to flow from the eyes of the twins. The more he preached, the more the spirit moved. The more he preached the truth. He shall know the truth. And the truth will set you free. And when he had finished preaching, they took the noose off his neck. Took him down. Hallelujah. From the gallows set him free. The church 150 years later I preached there before is still standing because somebody dared to stand on the truth. Not only did he stand on the truth but he did praise God. I told you those three stories to say to you today. Hallelujah. If a little white brother in the back of the church can say praise God, brother. If Papa Bullock in the red dirt hills of Arkansas, one arm and 11 kids can farm 80 acres of land. If an old slave preacher can preach his way out of a death trap. Surely, surely, God has been good to you. Surely, I'm about to lose my mind up here. Surely, we can praise the Lord. Let everything that have breath praise Him.
While y'all was sleeping, I was praying. And the Spirit said, just praise him today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and join me. Look up on the hands. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. For being a good God. Said I wasn't going to tell nobody. I just couldn't keep it. Leave your view. Go tell somebody I love the praise it. Tell him it's good to me. Tell him it's good to me.